Hi, my name is Katie and welcome to Baking with Books, a channel where I combine your favourite literary works and baking to help make revision a little less painful, to learn something new or to make the things your favourite characters eat. Seeing as it's now 2020, it didn't seem right to not make anything from the book that's all about the Roaring Twenties. So today we're going to be focusing on F. Scott Fitzgerald's The Great Gatsby. Today we'll be making mixed lemon cupcakes from chapter 5 of the book, whilst exploring a few of the key themes to help you learn while you bake. while so I'm hoping it's kind of like riding a bike. If not, I have my housemate G behind the camera to provide some of her baking expertise. Anyway, so we'll be using Nigella Lawson's recipe which I will link down below um, and then we're going to finish off the cakes with white icing and daisies on top. Daisies are obviously a theme from the novel but the white icing I will explain later. In today's episode the themes we will be looking at are colour and nature which I'll talk about a little bit later in the episode. I've separated all our ingredients into separate bowls. We've got 100 grams of caster sugar, 100 grams of softened unsalted butter, 100 grams of self-raising flour, which I've already sieved, so it's gonna be nice and fine, and two medium eggs, plus the most important, the lemon. We're now going to cream together the butter and the sugar. So you're going to want to grab your softened butter. Please make sure it's softened. I've done this enough times to know that that's not good if it's not. And your sugar. So we're going to just mix it together. I'm waiting for G to get me. To, yeah, this is this is good. So while I mix, let's talk a little bit about the scene in which the cupcakes appear. So it's in chapter five, and it's a really important scene in the novel because it's right in the middle. It is, after all, the scene in which Daisy and Gatsby are reunited after five years apart. I'll now insert the quotation right exactly where the cupcakes appear. I took him into the pantry, where he looked a little reproachfully at the fin. Together, we scrutinised the 12 lemon cakes from the delicatessen shop. Will they do? I asked. Of course, of course. They're fine. Seeing as Gatsby is being reunited with Daisy after five years, he wants to make sure that the whole thing is perfect, and so it comes across a little stage. He even sends a gardener and flowers to Nick's house. So when Nick turns up with the cupcakes, he's a little bit unimpressed. You want to cream it so that it's almost light in colour. It helps if you use a little bit of force and tip the bowl to the side. As scholar Roger Lewis looks more closely at in his work, which I will have linked down below, Gatsby shows affection through his possessions, explaining why he then takes Daisy to his house. He quotes, Even when the sentiments are genuine, they are formulated in monetary terms. Even though everything looks pristine and seems to be going well, there is a nagging feeling throughout that something isn't right, that everything is staged and could fall apart at any moment. When your mixture is looking kind of like this, so very pale and fluffy, that's when you can stop. We're then going to take our lemon and a grater and we're going to grate the zest into the mixture. This is a recurring theme in the novel and is linked to the two main themes of today, nature and colour. In his essay on nature and objects, J.S. Westbrook closely looked at items of nature, especially citrus fruits and flowers, and stated that they reflected the fragility and perishability of the characters' dreams and the lives that Daisy and Gatsby lived. The fact that both lemons and daisies are present in this scene parts back to the idea that everything seems like it can fall apart, even when it's perfect. It's also important to reference that lemons are mentioned earlier in chapter 3. This quotation demonstrates the abundance, but also the unnecessary waste for Gatsby's parties. Scholar Brookley takes this even further, stating that nature is insulted and abased by people in the novel. This could also be considered a comment upon the nature of the upper classes who fuel consumerism in America for their own pleasure, but it leads to so much waste. Once you've grated all the lemon zest that you want into the bowl, we're just going to mix these together. Now we're going to put this to one side and grab another bowl to crack two eggs into. So these should be medium eggs Nigella has requested. Oh, it's <laughs> too bad. 
There we go. And then we're just gonna whisk these together into a smooth. A few seconds later. I think that's about done. So we're gonna add this little by little to make it a little bit easier to incorporate. As you can see, you need to use quite a bit of force to make the mixture incorporate nicely. And it does look a bit gross, but don't get worried about that. Now we're going to incorporate the flour that we sieved earlier. Do you please run to sieve it, otherwise it's going to be slightly difficult to do. Um, it's self-raising, so you shouldn't need baking powder, but Nigella does say you can use baking powder if you want to. I'm not going to, just in case, um, but if you do, please use a table, a teaspoon. Oh my gosh, that will be messy. Do not use a tablespoon. It's looking really nice, thick and creamy, which is exactly what we want. So when your batter is all nicely incorporated and looks something like this, then we're going to try and put them into the trays. I've got muffin cases, um, but you can use normal cupcakes. That's cupcake cases. That's fine. Quite looks like quite a doughy mixture, but don't worry about that. So we're just gonna nice and evenly put them into the cupcakes. And so I'll try and put like a dollop in first, and then I add more later. And then we're gonna put these in the oven. Whilst they're baking, here's a bit of information about The Great Gatsby. The Great Gatsby was published on April the 10th, 1925, although Fitzgerald had begun writing it in 1922. After his play The Vegetable failed in October 1922, Fitzgerald, his wife Zelda and their daughter Scotty moved to Great Neck, New York in Long Island. Long Island, New York, America's fastest growing community. Home place of business, playground for the millions It is here that Fitzgerald would be inspired to create the fictional locations of West and East Egg, which were based on Great Neck and Manhasset Neck. The Valley of Ashes was also meant to resemble Flushing Meadow, which was a swamp nearby that was being filled during the 20s. Something that many do not know about The Great Gatsby is that F. Scott Fitzgerald struggled to settle upon a title, and that the title that we all know and love was not actually his final choice. In the winter of 1924, Fitzgerald's working title was Trimalchio in West Egg. Trimalchio was a Roman character written by Petronius. Like Gatsby, he began his life in a lower station and gained riches through distasteful acts. Trimalchio also hosted extravagant parties in the work. On March the 19th, 1924, after sending off the manuscripts with the title The Great Gatsby, Fitzgerald wrote to his editor that the title he actually wanted was Under the Red, White and Blue, but it was too late to change by that point. As Ronald Berman noted, it is hard to argue that this novel was not a commentary upon American issues. Fitzgerald had always been influenced by human interaction and our behaviour in familiar social context. He was heavily influenced by an essay by Conrad entitled The N-Word of the Narcissus. He quoted it in an essay for the Saturday Evening Post in 1933, and it is clear how this influenced the style of his writing. My task is by the power of the written word to make you hear, to make you feel. It is, before all, to make you see. His personal life inspired the novel. He met Zelda while stationed in the South during the American Civil War. Like Gatsby, he was not allowed to marry Zelda until he could prove his financial successes. Another influence, especially upon the character of Daisy, could be his parents. F. Scott Fitzgerald's mother was a daughter of an Irish immigrant, but she was known to be ditzy and eccentric. He was apparently disproving of her behaviour and embarrassed by her. The novel is also greatly impacted by religion. Fitzgerald mentioned to his editor before he began writing that he wanted to make his next work a novel with Catholic influences. Fruit, such as the lemons and oranges, could echo the forbidden fruit. Many scholars have also likened Gatsby's garden to the Garden of Eden. With Westbrook noting, there is an overripeness and a natural plenitude in this new Eden. Now that the cupcakes are out of the oven, we're gonna get started making the icing. For this, you'll need the lemon juice from the lemon from earlier, and we use about 160 grams of icing sugar. I know the jello says to use 175, but we're not making butter icing. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add the icing sugar 
to the lemon juice and then mix together. Just making sure that we don't have too much icing sugar and we want it to be quite a thick texture. So thinking about our main theme today, colours and nature, we're going to talk a little bit more about the colours yellow and white. So yellow is an obvious colour which is reflected within the novel. It's the colour of Gatsby's car, which, spoiler alert, Daisy runs over Myrtle with. Nick also uses it countless of other times to describe characters and places. Most often, it's associated with Gatsby. Yellow is the colour of deceit and fake money. It symbolises fake gold. Gatsby is living a life based on money that he shouldn't have, which could fall apart any second, all of which is hiding the true person he is underneath, James Gat. White is also an important colour as it is associated with Tom and Daisy. In A.E. Elmore's essay on colour in the cosmos in The Great Gatsby, they explored the idea that white is the colour that Tom is obsessed with due to his racial beliefs. Elmore's most interesting point is about Daisy herself. Her name is associated with both the colours of white and yellow, which reflects that she's torn between Gatsby and Tom. So when your mixture reaches this level of thickness, this is kind of what we want, you can make it whatever you fancy, then we're going to start decorating the cakes. So we'll just do one to show you an example. So we're going to put one blob, ooh, it's quite runny, onto the cake and let it spread out a little bit. We're going to finish the daisy on top. So there you have it, Nick Carraway's Lemon Cupcakes from The Great Gatsby. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope to see you next week where we learn more about your favourite literary works and bake literary inspired recipes.